Okay, this is video four. Uh, we have our, our basic character here. And once again, he's just revived from, um, essentially from our silhouette. We got a bunch of silhouettes that we did really rapidly. We added a value layer, grayscales, a little bit of color, some shadows, and some highlights, and then just some finishing touches. And again, this is all done uh, ridiculously quickly. Uh, no, and to define our character uh, and obviously we can spend a lot more time on this than required um, so what I'm going to show you now is just a really amazing uh, finishing technique uh, I'm just doing a couple of quick adjustments while I'm explaining and this is adding textures um, now textures are really great at just sort of finishing off a, a character or an object or something like that um, now, once we've got our character to, to a decent level, um, you may wish to sort of combine all these together. So to do this, there's a numerous, numerous ways we could do it. We can shift select those, duplicate them, uh, and merge them, uh, which works well. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, you know, because at some point you may wish you want to go back and do some fine tuning on these. I'm going to show you another technique. I'm going to create a new layer up the top here. And I'm going to hit the uh, keys Alt, Control, Shift, and E. That again is Alt, Control, Shift, and E. And that's going to create a, a combination of all the layers. Um, now, I am going to run into one slight problem. Um, so I'm going to do that now, and as I do that, we can see that our character appears in that screen there. And if I actually grab this, we can see it is sort of a, a combined character with all those layers. And you know that works fine. I'm going to undo that. The only issue I have with that is it has the background. So I actually want to do that again, and again, Alt, Control, Shift, and E, and there he is there. He's got a twin brother. Um, and all these layers here, you know what, I can shift select them and, and drop them in a group and, and hide them. So, you know, there's my, my character there. It's all by himself. And I can start refining him. And, you know, this works out well, especially, you know, once we've done this, we may wish to start, uh, you know, adding or moving or doing stuff with this without having to rely on, on our mask. But in saying that, you know what, I'm going to select him again and drop a mask on. I do love my masks. Um, they do save us a lot, and especially for this next thing that I'm going to show you. Uh, turn that color thing off. And this is using, uh, I'm just going to transform it up a bit, just to get a little bit more scale. Uh, this is to use textures. Uh, now, you can create your own textures, but I'm going to actually scale the interweb and grab some of these so um, there is our previous one Whoop. and I'm just going to type in uh, as a default I do love my rust textures if you've seen videos before that I've created uh, I'm just going to type in the word rust let's go to images and they just have you know, such wonderful colors earthy colors and 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 nice textures to them um, so I'm going to go through some of these and we'll show you how, how to apply some of these and really it adds so much to an image by, by doing this. As we're going through these, just remember, as with anything, do be aware of your resolutions. Um, so, um, you know, if you want something that's got a decent enough resolution, you don't want anything that's going to be like 16 pixels by 16 pixels, that's just going to be weird. Um, you know, and we're going to try and find something specific. So. Um, you know, if he's got like armor up here, we could have really defined that. But um, you know, maybe we want something that's going to have look like the the armor's sort of worn away uh, and stuff like that. So um, when dealing with textures, a couple of things to look for, and that is contrast of your image. So you know, is it going to show up well? And the other one is the color as well. So color we can change, um, but you know, this one's sort of looking quite good for me. Um, let's see if we can view that. 
This one's got some nice contrast here. I, I'm kind of liking the green for some reason. I think that might show up nicely. So I'm just bringing that into my scene there. Just dragging that in. Um, you may need to save it to your desktop and then drag it in, um, depending on the uh, constraints for that. So I'm placing this over here. I'm going to transform this up a bit. Again, Control T. Um, this Wacom is playing havoc with my Shift key. It's just not allowing it to kick into place. And I'm placing it on top. And you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit confusing seeing what's going on. So this is why I've created our mask here. So once again, selecting on the mask using control, you can see the marching ants. I'm going up to my rust layer and I'm dropping a mask on him, which is kind of cool. There he is. Let's move down a place, put him back in again. Now, all very well and good, but we still we can't really see our character now. So I'm going to actually run through this with some blend modes again. Blend modes are your friend. Uh, I'm going to go to my shortcut, which again is my selecting my move tool and holding down shift and hitting plus or minus. I'm just going to start cycling through until I get something that's going to work for me. Um, and, you know, we can sort of, uh, you know, adjust these later. Um, Color burn's kind of exciting. Um, I'm going to stick with overlay. Uh, for some reason, overlay really does work for me. So there's overlay. We can, suck, we can still kind of see our character through there. Again, we can adjust our opacity down a little bit if we wanted to. But I'm going to start moving this thing around a bit. Um, now, this is where our link comes in between our mask and our layer. So if I select on my layer and I move it, we can see that the mask basically moves with it. Um, not really what we want. We want the mask to stay in place. So I'm going to unlink this. I'm going to click in there. What this is going to allow me to do is actually select on my layer and move my layer around, and it's going to stay within the confines of that mask. So I can move that around, and I can even transform it. Oop, that's really jumped off the screen. Again, I said that this is playing havoc with my shift key for some reason. Transform and maybe rotate. And maybe we can find something. That's there's something interesting happening there, just on the that shoulder thing. I'm going to enter on that, and that's not too bad. That's that's kind of fitting in uh, with the motif of that. Now this is where. We can edit our mask, and I haven't really got into that so much. I've just sort of gone, yeah, there's our object, here's our mask. I'm going to select on my mask, and I'm going to go to B for brush. Get myself a nice soft brush, similar to one that we've um, been painting color with. And when you're selected on a mask, everything is going to work in grayscales. So even if I pick red, uh, you'll notice it's still going to turn up as sort of a gray color. Um, and masks basically work on grayscales, so everything from black to white. Anything pure black is going to be invisible, everything pure white is going to be visible, everything going to, in between is going to be a variation of that. So, selecting on my mask, selecting black, selecting a brush, I can now go in and start brushing out for some reason, my brush is set to different, so I'm going to make sure it's set to normal. And I can start gradually, it's kind of erasing my mask for where I don't need it. So I can say, you know, I like this rust area, I don't really like this green area, so let's just, you know, basically wear that, wear that out a bit. That's kind of working for me. Uh, you may want to have a look at changing the colors a bit. So image, adjust, oh, make sure we're on our, our layer, not our mask. We can't adjust the color on our mask because it's only black and white. We can move some stuff around and you know, see if we can't get something working with that. And you know, that, that's getting there. It's not, you know, as I said, this is just a sort of a rapid, rapid version. Uh, let's see if we can't find another texture that's going to work for us. 
Uh, typing the word texture helps. And let's see if we can find something a bit funky. All right, let's just try this one. Fairly low res. I think we can get away with it. It's, it's not. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not amazing. It's only going to be a texture anyway. I'm going to grab this guy, and let's really stretch him out. Let's see if we can get him covering most of the image. Um, I kind of picked this one because it's got some nice blues and oranges in there. Again, sometimes you can get the colors to pick. All right, so this mask here, we've actually obliterated a little bit. So I'm actually going to go back to our original. Um, again, control. You can just see the marching ants there. Back to the mask layer. Mask over the top. And once again, I'm going to hit some blend modes. And just see if we can't find something that's going to, going to work for us. Get some very weird effects sometimes. Color burns doing something kind of cool. Um, it's really making them look quite interesting. I'm actually going to keep that. I'm going to duplicate that layer. Um, it's just something fun happening with that. Turn, turn one of them off. And I'm just going to drop the opacity down a little bit. So sometimes with a blend mode, it can be a little bit harsh. So uh, I'm going to drop the opacity down a bit. And then I'm going to go um, use what I did previously on the, the other one. It's going to go to my mask and back to brush. And I'm just going to start erasing out some of the mask area just so I can sort of see a little bit more of my character. And, you know, that's it's kind of interesting. Um, this other texture, let's bring them up the top. And I'm going to change that to an overlay. Yeah, you know, what? I'm actually just liking, liking that. It's just added a nice little jump of a texture. Um, it's probably a little bit extreme, so... You know, let's just ramp that down a bit, um, like so. And we can really get carried away with this, um, you know, and just making sure that it fits in there, there neatly. Um, once I'm done with all this, uh, I'm going to create a new layer, hide my background again, Alt, Control, Shift, and E, so all the buttons. Um, if you're on a Mac, uh, Command, Alt, Shift and E, um, and there we have our singular layer here. Um, and the cool thing about doing that singular merge layer is we can go in and play with our adjustments, and it's going to affect that that layer specifically. Um, and it means that we don't have to jump back and forth to some you know different stuff. We can go you know, just do a few little subtle tweaks here and there. Cool. A uh, couple other finishing things. Again, uh, I'm going to duplicate this guy. And with the duplicate, I'm going to hit T for transform. And I'm going to sort of flip him down like so. Let's take him below in the layer below. I'm going to double click on this called a shadow. Shadow, great. And I'm just going to add a quick shadow using his reflection. So, reflection is going to be great for doing this kind of stuff. Um, you know, there's the transformed one. It's kind of squished down, which, you know, does happen sometimes with, with uh, a shadow for this. Um, you can hit T for transform. We could even do, you know, a rotation. Or we can do something cool like going um, edit, transform, and something like distort. It's going to allow us to sort of move that across to a distorted shadow if need be. Um, and then I'm going to go to this uh, effects button down here, effects, and I'm going to go to gradient overlay. Click on that. Um, and so I'm going to change the blend mode to normal, like so. And we can see straight away with this particular gradient, this is a black to white one, we can do variations of that. Um, we can adjust the angle that's sort of being affected, and we can also affect the scale of it. 
like so. And that kind of works. And I'm just going to drop the opacity of that. Uh, it's kind of not quite fitting underneath his foot properly there. So I'm just going to move that around like so. And I'm going to go to filter and just do a little blur on it. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Let me sort of ramp that up a little bit. Just get a bit of a little bit of a blur on it. Like so. Uh, and it's just to tie it all together. Um, and there we have it. And, and once again, this is you know just a very quick technique um, for doing stuff. Once again, quick silhouette prototypes, um, adding some texture to it, um, and from that, um, some color variations over the top, and then coming up with our final image um, that we can use as sort of a character mock-up. Uh, we'll spend a lot more time on this and you know really refine it, but it's a nice quick way of just getting some, some uh, rapid uh, some prototyping done for that. Um, closing remarks for this, uh, if you are having trouble with, with getting 